Well, thanks for joining me once again, all my YouTube subscribers, as we continue the series of World of Classic Dirt Bikes. Now, in this featured video, we're going to take a look at a machine that was essentially built for road use, but was then uh, slightly modified to be used as a full-on classic dirt bike scrambler. So stay tuned as we look at Jim Colligan's 1982 Suzuki DR500. Now Jim has recently just purchased this machine and his intention is to use it as a second bike and uh, as a backup machine should he have any problems with his number one race bike, his 1981 Ford 90 Michael. Now of course these DR500 Suzuki's were originally uh, made for uh, road use and came with a lighting pack, a speedometer and uh, indicators. Although the previous owner has uh, removed all these items to make the bike into a fully blown off-road racer. Now of course other than removing all the electrics etc uh, the previous owner has made some modifications to the bike to make it more suitable for the uh, rigors of off-road racing. Now these Suzuki DR engines in their day were decent enough lumps and were certainly not short of overall horsepower when it came to uh, outright speed. Now some of the specifications of the motor were that it had an overhead camshaft with four valves per cylinder. The ignition was uh, Suzuki's own electronic ignition system. The carburetor was a 35mm SS um, Makuni and of course these big Suzuki DRs had a 5 speed gearbox. And also as part of the upgrades the previous one have fitted these uh, very high quality wide foot bags. Now as mentioned earlier these uh, DR500 82 Suzuki's were originally made for road use with the occasional uh, green lane uh, off-road uh, capability but uh, when you remove all the lights and uh, road going fitments these machines can still make a very good outright uh, dirt racer. Now the exhaust system on this bike is a decent quality handmade stainless steel system with straight through tailpipe at the rear. Now uh, there is a very nice little tune played from this uh, exhaust system which we will hear later in the video. Now, as mentioned earlier, the original owner of this bike made a few upgrades to the machine prior to Jim's actual purchase. Now, of course, these forks are not the originals and have been swapped for these very heavy-duty 50mm Maxton modern units. Now, of course, also to make the modern forks fit the older drum brakes, this anchor plate had to be manufactured to fit the older front brake system. Now, of course, in 1982, the Suzuki still had a steel swing arm. And uh, as you can see, the chain guard, which would have been on the bike for road use, has been removed. And that lovely chain tensioner on the bottom is a product from Sammy Miller. Now, when Jim bought the bike, it had a pair of uh, piggyback shocks fitted but uh, these were from an unknown uh, maker but uh, in the end were not suitable for Jim's weight or height so he substituted them for these quality upgraded Orleans units which are of course of a much 
higher specification. Now naturally the original uh, road going handlebars were changed for a pair of these quality rental units. Now other improvements to this bike were these top of the range ASV unbreakable control levers. Now these quality parts are almost guaranteed to be unbreakable, although nothing of course is certain in this world and I'm sure if you tried hard enough you could still do some damage to these quality items. Now of course these are not the cheapest levers you can buy for your old classic dirt bike but uh, they are certainly of a very high quality indeed. Now when you're riding these old motocrossers you need a decent seat to support your backside when negotiating even the bumpiest of tracks and this original DR fitted seat has enough padding to keep you comfortable. Now of course this Suzuki has the original metal fuel tank as uh, fitted to the DR road going machine. Now the original owner bought this bike with a view to putting it back on the road but then he soon found out that because he was a bit short in stature the bike was just far too high for him to sling his leg over and uh, that was the reason he decided to sell the bike on. Now of course you could never take the original road going 1982 500DR Suzuki straight off the road and put it right onto a motocross track without uh, doing something to the front and a rear suspension because the original road going suspension would have been far too soft in any case but uh, this has now been uh, upgraded now and uh, things are looking good for the bike's inaugural race event. But at the end of the day, Jim never ever purchased this bike to replace his 490 Maiko number no. 1 race machine. And this old DR Suzuki was really aimed at being a second or standby machine should his uh, primary number no. 1 bike let him down on the day. Now the bike is soon to get its inaugural shakedown at the first round of the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Club's Round 1 event which is uh, coming up soon on the 31st of March and you can follow this bike's progression through my YouTube channel if you are a subscriber. So there you have it, we've uh, had a look at the bike, we've talked a little about it so the only thing left is to get her fired up and actually hear the bike running.
This video was brought to you in association with Love Sport Motocross Race and Leisure Wear and also in association with VMX Magazine, the world's undisputed number one publication for all your vintage and classic dirt bike motorcycles.